I'm just going to spend 10 or 15 minutes talking about Code Plan. Um, I realise that my first slide in a minute uh, has no introduction about me, so just, I guess, 30 seconds of introduction. Um, I'm the Chief Executive at Code Plan, which is a coding academy in Edinburgh, a startup organisation, and I'm going to talk about that tonight and what we're doing with code. Um, my background is, so for all the creative people I heard, I've met some people already, uh, I'm a I was a coder. I have been a coder. Um, it's like AA this, isn't it? It's like, um, uh, <laughs> I have to confess, and I, I love programming and code. had a really varied career in a lot of different industries from manufacturing and, and uh, pharmaceuticals manufacturing, all doing software development, by the way. I, I found out very early on that although I love coding, I'm really very poor at it. And um, certainly when it comes to anyone else having to maintain what I've written, which is usually a disaster. So I've, I, I found project management quite early on. And so a lot of my career has been based around project management, um, particularly Agile and Scrum. So I also work with a nonprofit in America, a membership organization called Scrum Alliance, um, who promote the use of Agile methodologies and Scrum in particular um, sort of around the world. And have a very, it's a very big membership organization. Um, but I find myself after a period in, um, I came up to Scotland, worked in a lot of financial companies, I worked for Capgemini and worked in a lot of the big banks around here in JP Morgan for quite a few years, part of their startup in their tech centre just around the corner from here. And I thought I love Glasgow, I love working here. Um, and then fell into uh, video games and worked at Electronic Arts and some startups and all sorts of stuff in many big and small companies around the world for the last few years. And I have the privilege of finding myself at Code Clan. So, what is Code Clan? Um, we can keep it on the current slide. No, it's all right. You can go, I'm going to talk on this one for a minute. Thank you. Um, this is going to be hard to coordinate, isn't it? Um, so, Code Clan is a digital skills academy, um, recognizing a problem that we have in Scotland, but actually UK wide, worldwide, that there is just not enough uh, people in coding. Um, it's a really sort of systemic problem we have, and I, I think many reasons for this. I grew up in a world where um, Home computing was new, you couldn't go into a shop and buy applications, you just had to write stuff yourself. You bought the magazines and you wrote code and you typed it in and it was all wrong and you learned how to program. Uh, and that was sort of the generation I grew up with, which I think actually really kick-started a, a huge sort of economy of people that got coding. Um, particularly in the games industry, which I've always been fascinated in, that's what got me into it because I wanted to play games and I wanted to write games. Um, and you see many of those people now have grown up with that and that's what they do. And I look at my uh, children. I've got three daughters who are um, all grown up now, and they were part of this generation that really missed out on that because ICT or computing at school for many years was how to use a mouse, a keyboard, a Word, uh, and all this stuff, and we've kind of missed out on this. And it's kind of come full circle, and I see great steps in education to bring it back into the curriculum. Um, BBC launching another initiative with Microbit, the Raspberry Pis. The barriers to entry are so much lower now, you can go and buy. A really cheap kit and open source stuff means that you can go and just develop things pretty much for free, which for a long time you haven't been able to do. So we're here because, as you have said, we have this discussion with many employers. We talk about being part of the, uh, the, the, sort of the digital sector, but actually the world is digital. Any company anywhere is going to be using something somewhere that relies on code, ultimately relies on those ones and zeros in the bottom level of a computer somewhere that makes, makes code work. And that's what we're here to do. So our, our purpose in life as Code Clan is to try and create a new generation of people that get code and can help fill that skills gap that we have in Scotland. And our sort of targets are pretty ambitious. Well, our targets are to create uh, 200 junior software developers from the, our Edinburgh location every year. We're on our fourth cohort of students, run about 20 each cohort, so we're on about 60 or 70 students at the moment. We'll be opening in Glasgow early next year and somewhere north, haven't decided yet, the year after. So uh, our target is an extremely precise 1,292 software developers in three years. Um, I don't know where that came from. Um, I wasn't part of that. I've been at Coplan since, uh, since September. We are a non-profit social enterprise company. Uh, we have startup funding as a grant and aid from Scottish Government, um, which has kind of pretty much come to the end of that funding, actually. That's to kickstart us. And after that, although we're a non-profit, we're, um, we're, we're a fairly sort of commercial, we have to be commercial, we have to actually make this work and be self-sustaining. So that's a little bit about Code Plan and where we've come from, so we can move on. Oh, it hasn't come across very well in my PowerPoint, has it? Um, and and here's, what, here's what we're really doing. We're training, creating opportunities for those people who wouldn't otherwise have found a route into digital tech. So we're not competing with schools, universities, people doing computer science, there's, you know, there's people going through that system. We're trying to pick up on that generation of people that missed out on that. So our target are really career changers. 
So people who have got an interest and a passion for technology, maybe tried to teach themselves, found themselves in a career that uh, is in a declining industry. We have people come down from uh, Aberdeen, for example, for our course increasingly at the moment. And but they've got this feeling that codes for them, but they haven't worked out how to do it. And we're here to help them become, uh, to sort of realise that sort of vision, so that we increase that digital population in Scotland to drive the economy. And um, there is a statement from the Scottish Government through their skills investment plan to be a world-class digital nation by 2020. I have to say, my experience so far is I think I think Scotland's already pretty much a world-class digital nation. I mean, the, the amount of stuff going on is just phenomenal. Um, so maybe it's maintaining that position and ensuring that we can drive the future through what the world is now, which is digital. So what we do, pretty simple. We are, well, I say simple. It's simple to say, hard to do. It's a 16-week immersive uh, course. It's a 60-hour-a-week full-time programme uh, for which people pay to come on. And our, our, our fee model is quite interesting. <coughs> it's a roughly 50-50 split. Students that come on our course pay £4,500. There's a lot of money, especially when you're used to free education in Scotland, for a 16-week. But 16 weeks equates to about 900 hours worth of learning, which I'll, I'll talk about a bit more. It's a lot of learning. And at the other end of things, the employers that we work with as partners pay a fee when they hire one of our junior developers. Because business is the place where there's the problem and we're kind of asking them to put their hands in the pocket and help us pay for this um, which so far is working out pretty well and I'll, I'll talk to, about that in a minute um, and what we're really trying to create are people that can go in and be useful straight away from day one so we're not about theory and being an academic we we kind of I guess we're an academic institution but we're so unacademic um, we're, we're a bit of a hybrid there's a, a lot of push on modern apprenticeships and about sort of vocational training which in the old days when I was at university so I kind of had a a bit of a bad name, I guess, but it is definitely um, real resurgence in that at the moment. So people that come to the end of our course, they need to be employable. After all, that's where we get half our revenue from, so it's in our interest to make sure they're employable. And that means a lot of things. It's the technical skills, but it's also their ability to work in a team uh, and just quickly hit the ground running, but as entry-level developers. We also do have a qualification that comes from um, Scottish Qualifications Authority, um, SQA, that we've developed with them to give sort of employers some confidence that at least we have something that is uh, fairly rigorous and, and no other coding academy has that. This is feeling like a, really like a sales pitch, I'm sorry, and it's not intended to be, it's really not. I'm, I'm hoping there'll be some questions later on about how we do this because that's the, in, that's the interesting bit really. Um, so let's move on to the next, the next slide. So our focus is really on coding. So our model originally came from a whole variety of coding academies that have appeared around the world. Um, mostly in large US cities, so um, sort of Bay Area, San Francisco, as you'd expect, in New York, and also London. There's quite a few of these now around the world. And it's a new model for education, I would say, which is this immersive, collaborative, mentored learning. So our lessons don't look like you might expect. They're not lectures, it's not PowerPoint presentations. From the minute somebody walks through the door with us, you're writing code and you're supporting each other as a group of students, 20 in a class with five instructors for 20 students, so a really high ratio of people, and you're being taught how to figure things out for yourself in, in a large way. We can be the principals, um, but you're figuring things out. And we focus on a variety of languages. This has changed a lot in the last six months, and it's about the craft of programming, because I think one of the misconceptions is, is that programming is a very technical, scientific, prescriptive thing which is in some parts of the world and some disciplines and, and industries it is, but it's actually an incredibly creative endeavour. So one interesting fact for us is that if I, I was in the room today, actually, there was a, a load of people looking at some of the projects they'd done, about 30, 40 of the students there, and I think if I'd asked them to put their hands up for anybody who played a musical instrument, I would have got at least half of that group. You know, so there's a real interesting crossover between that sort of creative mind and coding. I, I sort of often use the analogy of it's like sculpting. For people that code here, you'll know this. It's a very iterative, creative process, not a um, tick all these boxes and you'll have a program. It just doesn't work like that. It's a very, very creative problem solving in, uh, sort of endeavor. So we focus on um, very commonly used programming languages, particularly those in the world of the web and mobile development. And we also focus on modern best practices for programming. For some of you this will mean something, but for others it doesn't. But there are certain paradigms in programming that make coding, unlike when I was learning it, when my code was terrible for anyone else to read, they probably couldn't, unmaintainable. These things make it maintainable and robust. So packaging code up into small pieces that are readable by other people 
and um, are, are, are written with the testing and the quality in mind. In fact, the first thing that students do when they join us, the first bit of code they write, or code, it's not quite code, is a test rather than a bit of code. They write a bit of uh, a test, and then they write the code to pass the test. And throughout the whole course, that's built into the whole uh, the whole process, which employers love. We also use um, a, a lot of sort of agile methodologies throughout the course. The way the whole uh, course is structured uses a, a lot of agile approaches. So they have a daily stand-up meeting every day to talk about how things have gone, what we can improve. We do retrospectives. We do all the stuff that goes with agile um, uh, as well. Okay. <clears throat> Yeah, so this is how it looks like for somebody in CoCloud. This is this sort of agile iterative cycle, I guess, of very sort of empirical. You do something, you learn, you, you apply it by doing something, you review it, and then you repeat that. So every day, you're coding on with an instructor, you're writing code, you're learning a new concept. Then in the afternoon, you're probably applying that to a problem and writing code yourself or in groups. And then the next day, you'll have done some homework overnight and we review it, review it as a team. Every week, there's homework that you do over the weekend, which kind of consolidates all that learning from the previous week uh, in a slightly bigger uh, bit of development. So even, I actually sat in on the first, co oh, sorry, Cobalt 3 uh, a few weeks ago because I wanted to see really firsthand what it was like. And the first weekend's homework, based on the fact that, bearing in mind that most people had done no coding before they joined us, was to write a warehouse picking application um, without a fancy interface, but it was to do some pretty, some pretty interesting logic. And that's the kind of weekend's homework that we're doing. Through to the end of each of these modules, we do a, a slightly larger project of a week or two, uh, individually or group, to apply it and do real world problems and actually create applications. So there we go. And, and this is what fundamentally it's all about. I just drew this the other day, actually, because I kind of summed up what we do. People come into this classroom, they make cool stuff really quickly, and they get hooked. Coding is like a drug, honestly. It's just amazing. Once you've discovered that thing, you can't put it down. They make cool stuff with other people, the other students, the instructors, to solve real problems that's supported by uh, the instructors and the people in the room. And actually the other students, what I found fascinating is that I've been to the classroom and seen uh, some of the students who get the concepts more quickly in a particular week, actually at the front, almost giving a lesson to the other students. So it's a really collaborative environment uh, to, to learn in. So, typical Coke Clan student, there is no such thing as a typical Coke Clan student. Here's some of them. Uh, our, our target market is really career, career changes, I guess, as I said before. Average age is round about 30. In fact, it's almost dead on 30, but it's quite a widespread. From sort of, uh, we try not to go down to the too young age because the employability bit gets a bit tougher then. Um, but mid 20s up to you know, all, all sorts of ages. Majority have degrees. Uh, already, but not computer science degrees. Some have uh, computer science degrees from sort of from old, if you like, from years ago and upskilling. But we have lawyers, we have English students, uh, ancient history, videography, you name it. Uh, they're very educated people who just haven't quite uh, found their way in life. Um, and what they have in common is they've just discovered this passion for, for, for technology. So, next one. And just a quick summary of where we are today. So, we started up in September. We have two cohorts of uh, just under 20 students each that have completed, and I'll talk about where they've gone in terms of employability in, in, in a minute. Uh, we have a third one that's about halfway through, and a fourth one started this week. So in terms of our targets of where we're trying to get to, I think we, we, we're doing pretty well, that's 60 or 70 students so far this year, learning fast about the curriculum and what we're doing, um, and getting really great interest from employers who, you know, again, forward thinking, realise that there's such a shortage of these people out there. And as we said at the very start, the world is run by digital and we need these people. So uh, we also have ambitious plans for where we're going. So there's a 200 students here in Edinburgh, Glasgow, like I said, another location, other courses, other areas. I think the vision for the future would be for us to take anybody who comes to us for an interview and an application and we're on about a three to one ratio at the moment of people that apply to people that we take on the course. But I do believe that we just need to find the bit that everybody can be, can excel at and be brilliant at. And I've got this vision for the future that I think will be coming for an interview. Okay, you're not probably going to be a coder, but you might be brilliant at doing UX, or you might be brilliant at digital marketing, or you might be great at uh, data science. And actually having sort of streamed people to feed this digital economy with all those different skills that they need. And finally, 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 people that are interested, here's where people are going. So after 10 weeks finishing, uh, after finishing cohort one, we have all but one of the students out in jobs. 
um, which is pretty amazing in a really wide variety of sectors, types of companies, small startups, big banks, Scottish government, you name it, they're all out there um, working or they have a, an offer that they're about to start, um, apart from one who uh, decided he didn't really want to get a job at the end of all of that. And I know, incredible, he paid four and a thousand pounds and then decided he don't want a job. Uh, and after around about a month after the pill up two, we got uh, around about half um, placed in, and again, in a variety of jobs in all these different sectors. Interesting that given that we're here to support the economy in Scotland, just over 80% of the students have ended up in destinations around Edinburgh and Glasgow particularly, although there are some more far-flung places. Um, two or three have ended up in places. One actually, amazing success story, a guy who um, came to us to learn coding, he'd been a TV producer, has gone back down to London to go work at Instagram on an absolutely crazy salary, which is um, really, really interesting. Um, he's taken his tech knowledge there, and one of the students who has gone travelling to Barcelona and so on. But, but we're focused on Scotland in, in a whole range there. And starting salaries are in a pretty wide range, but they're averaging around about sort of 22, 24. I would say 24 is the most common starting salary for the, for the graduates. And it's not just about the starting salary, it's really about the prospects of getting a foot in the door of a digital career, which will take you to you know, doubling of that salary, I think, pretty quickly. That's what makes it attractive as, a, as an investment for people with their £4,500. Uh, I think that was all. I wanted to keep it short and sweet. I say it sounds a bit like a sales pitch. It's really not. Um, there's a lot to talk about if you want to grab me afterwards to talk about sort of agile, which I, 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 you know, I'm, I'm a huge fan of in development, but also in how we're learning about code and the importance of that, the languages we teach and, and, and how to get into that sort of stuff. So um, I don't know whether we do questions now. We'll do questions at the, at the end. end. Yeah. Cool. Thank you very much.